What's really profound for me about this next story of Jeff Henderson is that it's never too late to have a wake-up call and that all life is about growing to be who you were most meant to be, the best version of yourself, and that even if it takes a disaster in your life, there's always time until you take your last breath to recognize that you have the power. Executive chef Jeff Henderson is at the helm of Cafe Bellagio in Las Vegas. How are you guys doing today? Watching Chef Jeff today, it's hard to imagine the troubled path that led him here. I grew up in a neighborhood just like this one here. A lot of poverty, banded homes, people sleeping in cars, dealers hanging out on the corners. Jeff says his father left the family when he was only two, and his mother struggled working two jobs. Me and my sister pretty much took care of ourselves. It was tough at times, you know, there were times when, you know, we wondered what we were gonna have for dinner. Arrested for theft at 15 years old, it wasn't long before Jeff says he started selling marijuana and crack cocaine. I was making up to $35,000 a week, and uh, I'm sure at least four, five, six million dollars went through my hands. By the time he was 21, Jeff was one of the biggest drug dealers in town, becoming, he says, a neighborhood legend. I thought I was on, you know, I was on top of the world. You know, I was a man. But Jeff's high-rolling lifestyle came to an end when federal agents raided his home and arrested him. He was convicted and sentenced to 19 years in prison for drug trafficking and conspiracy. When the judge handed down my sentence, it was like I couldn't even move. Jeff was no longer a high roller. He was now inmate number 16138-198. Ashamed of his past, Jeff began to come to terms with the toll his choices had taken on others. He says exposing his family to his drug life is one of his biggest regrets. At times, my mother used to help me count money, and when I was locked up, she had to come visit me. You know, when you're poor and you never had nothing, and the opportunity comes to have money and, and do the things that you want to do. You know, you just look the other way. For Jeff, prison became a catalyst for change. My first book I ever read was in prison. I started to believe I was smart, and I wanted more. I wanted to learn more. Did you never know you were smart before, Jeff? From an educational standpoint, I didn't. Didn't know you were smart. No. Well, after serving nine years, Jeff was released from prison. I, I understand you told my producers that prison actually saved your life. Yes. What is the most important thing you think you learned about yourself in prison? That I am somebody, and I'm proud to be an African-American, and I am smart. And uh... What was key in this interview for me was him saying, I started to realize I was smart, and I started to believe in myself because that's when you get to turn it around. And I'd have to say, um, for myself, growing up in Mississippi, being a brown-skinned girl, I recognized that I was smart and that I could use that to my advantage. Now, the fact that I was able to figure that out when I was five and six, and it took Jeff Henderson being in prison to recognize it, says to me that everybody has their own time and everybody is evolving to what is their own moment in time for that discovery of that power that lies within all of us. When I got in the kitchen, I realized that inmates who worked in the kitchen got to eat better than other inmates. So you got the extra bananas, the extra chicken, and things like that. Mm. So I was like, wow, okay, this is, this is good for me. Yeah. My father left when I was real young, and so I wasn't brought up in sports. My mother always worked two jobs, so I never, ever was praised for anything, you know? And when I went to prison, and I was experimenting with food and putting out great pastries and entrees and stuff. People were like, wow, is Jeff in the kitchen today? You know, so it felt good to get those pats on the back. Yeah. So Jeff is now the executive chef at Cafe Bellagio in Las Vegas. Why do you think you made it? I made it because I had a dream in prison. You know, after I started changing my life and I said, you know, from a young child, I always wanted to be somebody. And in prison, I was being praised for my food. And that was a driving force for me. And I said to myself that I want to be a chef someday. Not everybody has a dream. And if you don't have one, you need to start thinking about what the dream for your life is. 
I always say that the only courage you ever need is the courage to fulfill the dreams of your own life. But if you don't have a dream today, start dreaming. Start believing that having a dream will lead you to the fulfillment of your dream if you're willing to let every step you take move you in that direction. It doesn't have to be formal. It doesn't have to be you're writing it down on paper. I now know that that helps if you can articulate it for yourself. And for everybody who's saying, I don't know if I even believe in myself, this is the truth. You deserve the best that life has to offer you. You deserve the best version of yourself. Why? Because you're here. Because you were born. You deserve the best life possible.